Hello, good morning from Wisconsin, everyone. My name is Julia Flaherty, and I am Ledgeview Partners Digital Marketing Specialist. I'm super excited to be introducing today's topic and presenter, but before we dive into the content, I have a few quick housekeeping notes to cover with you. First, for those of you joining us for the first time, I would love to introduce Ledgeview Partners. Ledgeview Partners is a business and technology consulting firm that specializes in marketing automation and CRM implementations. We serve a variety of businesses and industries and specifically work with Microsoft Dynamics 365 and Salesforce solutions, among a variety of marketing automation tools. Everyone is on listen only mode today, but if you do have a question or comment, please go ahead and post those in the GoToWebinar control panel and we'll be sure to follow up with you afterwards as we do have a full agenda today. Everyone who signed up for today's webinar is going to receive an on-demand link after it's complete. It will likely be available later this afternoon, if not later this week, so watch out for that email. Now that my housekeeping notes are out of the way, it's my pleasure to introduce Chad Collette, the Director of Marketing at Ledgeview Partners, who's going to be speaking on today's topic, 10 Steps to a Successful CRM Implementation. He's going to cover a lot of wonderful insight and advice today, so be sure to focus your listening, and I'm going to pass it over to him. Hi, Chad. Hey, Julia. Thank you for that warm welcome. Now, I know we've kind of got all walks of life on today's webinar, and some of you that may already have CRM in place, and I'm sure they're looking for tips on implementing new features or upgrading your platform in the future, perhaps looking for validation that when you did launch CRM, you really hit on all the right steps. I know others in the process of an implementation, and I'm sure we have some where CRM is on your radar for 2022 and really want to ensure success from the get-go. Now, not to really date myself, but I've been working with CRM solutions for over 20 years, including products like Salesforce, Microsoft Dynamics, HubSpot, and many others. Now, while these tools differ in look and functionality, one thing that holds true for every single one of them is that if the implementation is not a success, user adoption is affected. And ultimately, it really dooms these solutions that companies are investing in. And the blame? Well, it typically and unfairly goes to the product. I've heard users time and time again say things like, oh, Salesforce doesn't work, or Microsoft Dynamics is hard to use, so I just don't use it. Now today, we're gonna save these powerful CRM tools from unfair harassment and blame and work on setting the solution and our users up for success really from the start with these 10 steps to a successful CRM implementation. Now, we only have 30 minutes today, so I wanna to touch on each step at really kind of a high level. In fact, each step really could be its own deep dive webinar. Now, we're gonna lay out what we feel are 10 important steps to a successful implementation. As we move through these key 10 steps, Please keep in mind that in order to have a successful project, that you don't have to absolutely master all of these to the degree that we describe, but that each step should have some presence in your project. As I said, many of these could have their own dedicated webinar and we could go into a lot more detail. It's also important to note that these aren't the only steps that could be taken, but really just 10 of the ones that you know, we encounter a lot. And depending on your culture, the size of the project and the rollout, each of these steps will vary in its depth and its importance. Now, we're not necessarily presenting these in their order of importance, but really in more of a logical flow of how they may happen during a project. And we hope that at the end, you're gonna leave this webinar with some good ideas and possibly some action items that you can take back to the office that will improve your implementation or your upgrades. Now, the 10 steps, in my opinion, it's the 10th one, user adoption, that's really the most important because Really without it, all the others don't matter. As we go through the steps, you'll be able to draw conclusions that each one directly or indirectly, if done properly, feeds user adoption. Also, you know, a lot of what we're talking about speaks directly to first time core implementations. All these steps can also be applied to phase two, phase three, et cetera. Roll out a new functionality, upgrades, uh, such as moving from an on-premise solution to the cloud. So hopefully everybody's ready to go and we're gonna get started. Out of the gate, it all comes down to achieving your goals. And we do that from the beginning by defining the vision of what we want to accomplish by implementing CRM. 
Defining your vision involves really setting the stage and getting prepared for all the other steps. This one should be done first. Even though I did previously state that these don't need to be done in an exact order, uh, but we're presenting them. Now, you need to have an idea of what your current state is and your vision for your future state. And with a good understanding of that, you will then know the why, like why we're implementing CRM. It's also so important to really understand the what, like what problems are we addressing? What are our business drivers? For example, you might have too many systems and really no consistent data. So you might be looking to achieve system consolidation and data standardization. Maybe your current methods are too time consuming or they involve manual processes that to get the data that you need. Or there's a perception that you don't have the data at all. So maybe you're looking for better analytics and business intelligence. Too many pockets of people do the same thing, but doing it differently with no insight into the other parts of the company. So maybe you're hoping for improved collaboration with CRM. Or maybe you've pinpointed glaring inefficiencies within your people, your departments, or your processes. As an example, a recent implementation that we worked on had a business driver defined that they wanted to see kind of a more accurate sales forecast. The current process took one week at the end of every single month to prepare a forecast that involved manual entries and multiple spreadsheets. And at any point in the month, there was really no clear picture of where things were at. I'm sure many of us have experienced similar challenges and have just been ecstatic when those dreadful tasks become streamlined and, and a lot more efficient. Now, a crucial point here is that you should not be focused at all on the technology, but 100% focused on your business needs and your business problems. You may or may not even know what the technology is gonna be at this point. Now, if you don't know, don't concern yourself with it, but if you do, do this step independent of the system and any known features. If you focus on the technology and what it can do for you, you're gonna miss out. Now ask yourself, what is our CRM strategy? Once you start to view CRM as a strategy and not just a database, you've taken a step in the right direction. Now the importance of step one is to provide a North Star to guide you in all the other steps. We all know it can be easy to get off track. In those moments, you can easily get back on track by realigning with your vision, which is what we're discussing and spending time on. You know, does what we're doing, does it, does it relate to that vision? Does it point to that North Star? If you have no vision there, there's nothing to align it to. So all the other steps should be directly related to that why and to staying aligned. Now we'll talk more about process in just a few minutes, but we encourage you to seek out resources that can assist you and be your North Star. There's no need to reinvent the wheel. Yes, I'm gonna put a plug for several resources on the ledupartners.com website that focus on sales process, but also other key areas. We got, there's marketing, customer service, user adoption, and just a whole lot more. And that's the perfect lead in for our second step. As you're looking at implementing a CRM system, selecting a partner for your project is a critical step in a project. Now, depending on your solution, many companies try to save money out of the chute and just do it themselves. This is definitely a risky move depending on your internal resources, your culture, and your capabilities. When looking for a CRM partner, don't underestimate the evaluation period to find a good fit, not only for your project, but a partner that fits your organizational culture. While you may choose to engage in a project on your own, Partnering with a consulting company that is well-versed in CR implementations typically results in faster implementation with a higher degree of success. Since today's focus is on best practices for a successful implementation, we're gonna focus this slide on choosing a successful CRM implementation partner. Now to do this, you first need to understand why you need a partner by defining your project needs. Do you need help with selecting the best CRM technology for your company? Or maybe you already know what your technology you want, such as Microsoft Dynamics or Salesforce, and you're ready to jump into the design and the implementation. Or maybe training will be a cru crucial need for your company. Scoping out beforehand what you want a partner to do is gonna help with the next step of defining your partner's selection criteria. 
Now here you want to decide what is important to you. On the surface, this may seem obvious and most people would say, oh, I want somebody with CRM experience. This is a good start, but what about business focus? Does the partner focus on CRM, CRM implementations only? Or are they a full-fledged technology company? Do they have business expertise? Or really, especially when it comes to process development. Do they have experience in your particular industry? What is the size of the company and does it match the resources that you are going to require or need? What will your availability be to the project team and to developer resources? How many CRM projects have they completed? What are their project fees and their timelines? Do they typically try out, try to use out of the box CRM functionality or do they lean more on custom development work? This one might not have made your initial list, but it's an important one to note. We've encountered many people really happy with full custom development work, as well as many people that are really unhappy that the out of the box functionality wasn't used and they were taken down the path of custom work instead and often at a great price. Now, is this partner going to be a cultural fit for your organization? Will you and your team like working with them? Once you have your list set, prioritize these criteria and keep them handy when evaluating these partners you're going to want to interview your potential partner ask them for references make phone calls to follow up treat this like any job interview you're going to be spending a good amount of time with this partner so you want to really get the inside scoop on what it's like to work with them from the perspective of your peers did they deliver on time and on budget did they simply deliver what was communicated or did they act as a business partner and make require the requirements you have actually meet your goals? And did they offer up additional suggestions that will create efficiencies and drive user adoption? So you want to make sure you make the right call up front. After you make your selection, you want to make sure to define and articulate expectations to your partner in writing and be extremely clear about these that the both of you are on the same page and you're both in agreement. You wanna set the stage for the project upfront. Define to them what would make this project successful. So, oops, yep. So this is where you wanna develop your internal project team. We start with the purpose of the team. The project team fosters buy-in from the top down, and you must have buy-in from the top down. This leads to success and is critical for user adoption. And it makes this project visible within the organization. You wanna make sure that members of your team represent all applicable areas of the company. Now, your company is made up of many moving parts. Therefore, you need a team to adequately represent all those associated moving parts, be it sales, marketing, customer service, operations, engineering, etc. Having a project team that represents these multiple areas that will be impacted by CRM is going to allow you to gather a better understanding of the requirements. And with each team having involvement, that's really going to help drive the project success. Even though you may have representation from multiple departments, the team will serve different purposes at varying points of the project from gathering your design requirements, testing, the rollout and the go live, as well as continued enhancements after you go live. The size of the team is gonna vary based on the size of your company, based on your organizational structure and definitely based on your culture. Also, the scope of the implementation or the size of the project can definitely have an impact on the size and the makeup of your project team. Now, within that project team, you're going to need to assign project roles. Make sure your team has a wide range of knowledge, experience, aptitude, and attitude, all characteristics that are going to help you figure out that right number for the team. Now, here's just a few roles that may be part of your project team. Your steering committee. This group helps define the vision and the goals, but they might not be involved in the day-to-day -day or the hands-on with the project. As I mentioned before, you need your executive sponsors. These are your key stakeholders. They're gonna provide high level visibility and they're gonna be a driver for success. Having that top-down support is critical for any success of a project 
and it is especially true when it comes to CRM. You've got your project manager, your champion, or your team captain, whatever you want to call them. They're the ones responsible for owning the project and seeing it through. You want to make your choice carefully for this role. You're going to need somebody who can not only keep the project on task and on track, but be a voice to inspire high user adoption across the company as it moves forward. You want your subject matter experts. They need to be familiar with any integrations and business processes you're going to be incorporating within CRM. These may be people who know the process and can help to enhance it and work with other tools that can that you want to either phase out or you want to integrate with CRM. Now, don't forget your cross-functional or your cross-department users. This is huge. They need to use the system, so don't exclude them. They are your true champions, the users. Get them involved early. Make them love the system before it even goes live, and you're going to reap the benefits. And then there's IT. Yes, of course we need IT. It doesn't matter if you're deploying on-prem or online. IT needs a seat at the table and are a contributing member to the team. Now, it's easy to get off track before you even get started with your project team, so I want to just talk about a few common mistakes. Not having a team that's made up of those who represent the business. Many companies try to run a lean, small project team or have it fall to just one person. This can feed to lower user adoption and create really a lack of visibility in the company uh, that you're trying to implement the CRM solution for. Now, on the flip side, some companies include everybody. Too many players and no coach. Ultimately, what happens is that there's no ownership of the project and the direction is kind of hazy. Each person thinks another is getting things done and at the end, nothing gets done and it, everything just moves at a snail's pace. Companies can get too IT or too tech heavy on these projects as well. I think all of us non-IT folks have a true love-hate of IT. Now we love them because they bring us the best laptops and devices and frankly, when things go south, we need them and they know it. But CRM is customer relationship management and it should be led by sales, by marketing, by customer service, now depending how you're using the system. Many, many moons ago, way back in the early 2000s, I remember Microsoft decided to get into the CRM game. This is pre-Dynamics. And my company at the time had a very outdated on-premise CRM solution that was what it felt like 100 versions behind. Well, our IT director was a Microsoft whiz, self-titled, of course, or so he told everybody. Sales was awarded with a new CRM solution, but IT said they, didn't, they would take care of setting it up in a total silo, of course. I should say that he built it, and to say it fell flat is an understatement. Custom this, custom that. User-friendly, it was not. In fact, it took over 10 clicks just for a sales rep to enter a note or an activity when they had a conversation with a customer or a prospect. After that, we pulled the pin on that solution and went with another solution. But this time, had sales and marketing lead the charge, and user adoption was at an all-time high. We also see situations where the executive sponsor is micromanaging, which makes other team members resistant to offer ideas or take the lead. And finally, project teams that consist of team members that have no time to dedicate to a project this size. When that happens, the project may get rushed or the project may be incomplete. And ultimately, it may cost more, be less effective than you hoped, and potentially fail. Now, one of the key points we're going to talk about in the next slide is tips and the importance of establishing a game plan. To avoid project delays or low user adoption, our experiences suggest that you want to start strong by clearly defining your project scope and then hold a kickoff or several kickoff meetings, depending on the size of your project, to set that game plan for your project. During this meeting, you want to clearly state the objectives of the project, the who, the what, the why, the when, the where. Start building the excitement for your team and clearly state expectations for that team's involvement. Be clear that internal resources are going to be needed for the project, and this includes both people and their time. And be realistic about how much time people may need to dedicate to this project. Now, to use a baseball metaphor, because we are coming up, uh, you know, at the end of October here, early November, go for base hits versus a home run. 
when defining your project scope, it will be tempting to go for the home run projects. But it's important to see the value in the base hit or smaller projects that will ultimately lead you to scoring with your users. Identify those quick wins. While they may not be as exciting, cumulatively, they are impactful. In defining your project scope, you want to set your project milestones and prioritize your initiatives. Even on CRM roadmaps for solutions like Microsoft Dynamics 365 and Salesforce, it's oftentimes the small enhancements, ones that cause challenges for users for years that are the most celebrated and welcomed. You wanna make sure that you set a project timeline and you wanna to stick to it. Be dedicated to getting the project done on time, on budget, and within that scope we talked about. If the project extends too long, it's certainly going to jeopardize user adoption. It's better to launch phased projects than extend the project too long. It is so easy to get excited about CRM and all the things it can accomplish and produce scope creep on your project. You want to make sure you stay on track and make note of those wish list items and after launch, see which phase they may fit into. You want to have effective communication internally with your team and also externally with your partner. Now, we're going to talk about more of this in a few minutes, but communication will be a key factor of success in your project. To keep your plan in check, work with your CRM partner by communicating needs and responding to their requests as quickly as possible. We see so many projects fall behind due to lack of communication and response by customers. This is why you also need to be realistic with the workload and dedicate resources to it, something that we cannot stress enough. You have your vision, your partner, your team, and your plan. Now we need to determine what you want CRM to actually do in order to accomplish your goals. It's time to specify your requirements. Before you can start to add fields and create workflows and input data, you need to design your CRM. This is where your partner can hold their waiting goal. They are the experts and frankly, you're not. Based on your goals and your industry, a great CRM partner will be able to guide you as you determine the right requirements for your organization, starting with what are your current processes. Now, start by documenting a list of all your current processes. This list can be long, but think about things like your sales process, your quoting process, pricing approvals, your lead to opportunity, customer service cases, etc. This is also an opportunity for you to evaluate these processes. Are they proven? Are they solid? Or are they broken? Or are they only partially followed? Do they need some tweaking? Or do they need a complete redevelopment? Now is the time to make sure your processes can set your technology up for success. And you don't need to wait until you're thinking about CRM to do this. You can and should document all your processes early and often. Then think about other challenges your users are experiencing. Identify the problems. Which, which, uh, which are taking up too much time? Which do they, the users complain about or simply not do? Which don't really add value to your organization? Which processes seem inefficient or are they manual processes? Are they too complex? Do they not make sense? I know we've all heard that one before. And which are really the most important, the most crucial. This is gonna give you a pecking order and help you identify which areas are good for your phases. Phase one rollout, phase two, phase three, if it makes sense to do that. And as I've stated before, don't focus on the technology to guide you. It shouldn't define your process, the business needs should. Once the process or need is defined, Analyze if standard functionality can address the need. If not, then ask, can the process or need be modified and still adequately address the need? If not, then specify a customization. Now this flowchart helps identify that process of defining the need or the requirement. And if we need to create a change in our process or specify a system customization. Prioritize, prioritize, prioritize. As I mentioned, you don't want to do it all at once. We've mentioned this many times about launching CRM in phases. 
I mentioned it multiple times for a reason. Rome wasn't built in a day. We've all heard that. And neither is your CRM. Get those quick wins now. Prioritize what makes sense now. And push those that don't make sense now to later phases. It's okay if you don't roll out a thousand new features at once. Doing them over time will keep users excited and it leads to higher user adoption. And especially in today's world, you don't want to forget about mobile. Detail out your user's experience. Who needs it? How are they going to use it? How could they use it? For that, it could be a phase one, but likely a phase two or a phase three project. Perhaps it's all three. Don't just offer mobile to offer it or because it's available. Really think about the day-to-day -day experience that users need to have mobile. The ability to view records, edit records, enter transactions, enter call notes, uh, having offline access, creating opportunities or quotes, accessing cases. And the list really goes on and on. Anything that you can do in CRM, really these days, you can shift and do in a mobile device. I mean, mobile is its own animal and should be treated as such. It's not just a quick add-on, but it's a project that you need to give careful consideration to. And now that you have your requirements aligned, it's time to deal with your data, both from a migration and an integration standpoint. As a marketer, keeping your data clean is one of the hardest challenges we all have. It is so easy for it to get away from you. When it comes to CRM your data, you need to think about what data you want to migrate from a legacy system or even spreadsheets into your new CRM. This is your chance to start with a clean slate. So we need to ask ourselves, how clean is our data? Most companies will require some sort of data cleanup. Don't underestimate your efforts here. This can be a task that should be started now, regardless of your CRM stage. Involve the subject matter experts who are knowledgeable about the data coming from those systems. And don't underestimate the amount of work this can be or the time it's gonna take. If you're using a legacy system, it's good to know if you're gonna have access to that system after the launch, and you should need to reference any data that may not come over. As a project manager, you wanna be involved in this. It can get complex and confusing, but stay involved. If you don't understand, ask questions. Be sure you do understand, especially when approving the final data maps and overall plan. If done wrong, it can get costly to go back and redo or do a partial migration. Make sure to spend ample time reviewing and validating the test migration. You don't wanna rush this step. Now shifting to data integration, what does that mean? What exactly are you integrating? What are the triggers that need to occur between the systems? Now, if you're planning an integration system with your CRM, such as back office or marketing automation, make sure the, it adds business value, that it adds accuracy, that it adds visibility, that it creates efficiencies. You don't want to integrate just to integrate systems, and not all systems need to connect to your CRM. It's just like data migration, but integration, it's going to be involved in this. It can get complex and confusing, but you want to stay on top of it. If you don't understand, make sure you ask. Especially when you're approving final data maps and overall plan for this integration, it is so crucial to get this right. Now, to summarize, dealing with your data because it is that important, know what you're getting involved in. Don't underestimate the time or the resource you need to accomplish this task and be involved and make sure you ask questions. Shifting to something a lot more fun, we need to make sure we develop our communication plan, which goes way beyond just sending a few emails. Now, it's critical to have a team communication plan during the project and the post-project. During your project, it's gonna be important to communicate up, down, and out. Now, what do I mean by that? Communicate up. Communicate to your project sponsors, the executives, the management team. To this group, you wanna provide a high-level scope of the project, communicate project timelines and milestones, and where you're at in regards to the overall project budget. This group may not want the intricate details of the project, but they're just gonna to wanna to know how that's gonna make the company better. Manager meetings are a great place to share this information. Ask if you can be added to the agenda during the course of the project and just give a five minute update at each meeting. Communicating down. Hold and communicate regular project updates to the people that will be the day-to-day -day users of the system. Hold process design departmental meetings. 
involve them in the process and identify their pain points. Knowing that the system is gonna help them in their day-to-day -day is gonna help with user adoption in the long run. And communicate out. You wanna have and re maintain regular communication with your implementation partner. During the project I worked on, I would speak to my consultant several times per week, if not daily. It's important to not assume that the consultant knows every intricate detail of your business. It's better to over communicate than under communicate with your partner. Now the area of documentation may be overlooked during your project and it is one that takes a good amount of time to develop, but it's gonna help you with further communicating with your team as well as when you onboard new teammates. During the course of a CRM implementation, you are most likely gonna define new ways for doing processes or activities within your organization. We touched on that at the start of the webinar. These new processes should be documented as you keep your team on the same page. Ideally, you wanna create a standard operating procedure to help combat this. SOPs can help you define and document processes change with the CRM implementation and to share with CRM users. SOPs are really the who, what, when, and why of your processes. Now, I'm going to admit that these can take a good amount of time to create. However, an SOP or your CRM playbook will help you with easing the onboarding process for new members of a department like sales, marketing, or customer service to ensure that they do things the right way from the start. It can assist with ongoing training and help to ensure consistency in data entry. Have a conversation with your CRM partner on what will and what will not be documented during the project to fill in any gaps. Create documentation throughout the entire project. Don't just wait to the end of the project as it's gonna be way too overwhelming to accomplish and ensure that your documentation is in the same format and consistent throughout. Now, once created, make sure you have a plan for distribution and keeping the documents current especially as you evolve your CRM system over time. Who's gonna own that process? So many times we see time and effort placed to document all these processes and procedures, only to the document falls dormant and doesn't get updated or really even accessed. After all that work, migrating data, integrating systems and documenting processes, we wanna make sure to not let our efforts go undone. We need to keep moving forward. You don't wanna launch, train, and be done. Hopefully your vision is a long-term vision with multiple phases. Keep CRM top of mind. Always have a next phase planned out. And if you happen to be on premise with your solution, make it part of your budget and business plan to upgrade to the newest versions as they released. If you don't do that, it is so easy to fall behind and you're gonna be missing out on key functionality and user adoption. We encounter so many CRM users who voice their frustrations because frankly, they're just too far behind on the CRM versions and they feel archaic. Now, if you're part of the online CRM world or in the cloud, many solutions these days offer automatic upgrades to your organization when they roll out new enhancements. This is a great time to hold lunch and learns to showcase new features, send out communications to users on what's coming. You can create a simple portal or form or even email that users can submit enhancement suggestions. Make sure you pay attention to these. Some of these are not gonna make business sense, but many of the greatest features that have come from ideas just from everyday users. And get involved in user groups, either in person when those return or online. Many top solutions have communities that are nationwide, worldwide, where Users and admins can bounce ideas off each other and use each other as a resource to solve some of these complex challenges. Take advantage of the resources that are out there from a training and user adoption perspective. Now, during this presentation, we mentioned or alluded to the need for user adoption at many stages of your project. In fact, I might have mentioned that at every step. So we're going to end the webinar today by listing this as number 10, but it could easily be number one. We cannot underestimate how vital user adoption can be to your project. How do you build the fan base and get your team really excited about the project? You wanna communicate the big picture and the business value. I mean, what's in it for them? How is it gonna make their jobs easier? Clearly define why we're doing this 
and how will this implementation be good for the company? It's very important to define this and communicate this at every single stage for your project. Oops, got ahead of myself here. You want to involve your team in the planning process design. You want to change, you know, change is hard for many, but involving people in the project as much as you can before it goes live is going to help them to really be more comfortable with the change. You want to do this by involving them in the process design and again, regular communications. You want to show them how it's going to help the team succeed. Be their cheerleader. Depending on the size of your project, it'll sometimes be hard to maintain the momentum. It's going to be important to keep your team engaged and excited throughout this. And your project champions can really help in this area as well. And train and retrain the team. When it comes to the part about the project that you're ready to train your teams, ideally training should be hands-on training with all users having their own computers or devices. Creating real-world scenarios for them to walk through the system so they see how it will relate to their day-to-day. -day. Once training has been concluded, it's easy to assume that just everybody's comfortable with the system and on you go. Now, oftentimes people need to hear things more than once before they really grasp the end goal. Continue nurturing the users after training and go live. Check in with them regularly and welcome their feedback and success suggestions. Remember to train them when new system upgrades come out or you change processes. Oh yeah, and one of the most forgotten training aspects is new employees. You go through all these steps to ensure that your CR implementation is perfect and your training was spectacular, but then life happens and you flow back into the hustle and bustle of it all. When new team members start, make sure to give them the same dedication and provide the same excitement around CRM and make them champions from the start. And if you're looking for ideas around user adoption, there are a lot of options on the web today, including at our website at ledgypartners.com. In fact, we created an entire series of user adoption ebooks and infographics that'll take you from the pre rollout to the day of, all the way down the road when you need to light a fire and get your users excited again. Uh, multiple ebooks, multiple infographics, some great tips. So make sure you take advantage of those. And I don't want to get ahead of myself or steal some of Julia's thunder for, for closing there. But there you have it. You have 10 steps that'll help you pave the way to a successful CRM implementation. Now, as I stated, we could have gone into a, a much deeper dive on every single topic. And in the future, we're going to have more webinars and content to come on those as well. But if you have a specific need or a hurdle or a story to share, please let us know. We'd love to engage with you and really help drive that success and, and spread those, those best practices. So with that, if you have any questions about Salesforce, Microsoft Dynamics 365, CM implementations, I'm available and I'm also surrounded by a team of people that are way more knowledgeable and passionate about CRM than I am here at Ledgeview and we'd love to help you succeed. So on here now is my contact information. It's also gonna be in the follow-up email you're gonna receive and uh, to share a few more of our resources and to close things out, I'm gonna turn it back over to Julia. Awesome, love all of the tips, Chad. Thank you so much for taking the time to share your expertise with us. If you enjoyed today's session, we do have a large variety of content available on our website. So whether you like ebooks, webinars, demos, tutorials, infographics, or blogs, you're sure to find something that suits your learning style and uh, whatever topic you're looking for, customer service, sales, marketing, Salesforce, Microsoft Dynamics, and thought leadership. If you want to be alerted as to future webinars we're hosting, I do suggest subscribing to our blog so that you never miss a LedgeView Partners update. We do have two webinars coming up, your 12-step guide to lead nurturing success on November 11th at 11 o'clock a.m. Central Time, and the best practices to gain Microsoft Dynamics 365 user adoption on November 3rd at 11 o'clock a.m. Central Time. We hope to see you for those. It's been absolutely wonderful having you join us today, and we do hope that you have a great rest of your week and a happy Halloween. We'll see you soon.